What is it that you want? What is it that you need? A remote clutch of jagged peaks with severe granite walls rising out from the glaciers. Flanks more reminiscent of the towering walls of Yosemite Valley than most other parts of the Alaska Range. In 2008, fueled by stories of the best climbers of past generations, I had tried to climb these peaks and been proven unable. Reading through my journals from my first expedition to Alaska, I was astounded by how young my voice sounded. We are in fucking Alaska. My goodness gracious. This place is really big and really full on. The Alaska factor was in full effect. Holy shit. 14 years later, with Whit Magro and Dave Alfrey, I returned. We are heading in to attempt a new route on the northwest aspect of Kachatna Spire. Uh, it's gonna be really fun, should be a wonderful adventure. Pretty stoked to be out here with a couple guys I haven't done a, a huge trip with. Flying into the Alaska Range was like swimming through familiar waters. I let the feeling wash over me as I stared out the window. Having taken more than a dozen expeditions into those peaks, they were familiar and full of memories. It was a range that had occasionally allowed me to ascend into the unknown, but just as frequently, it sent me home empty-handed, or worse. Then, through the windshield of the plane, granite spires dominated the view. Majestic, towering, terrifying, alluring. Amongst the silence of the glacier and the walls, we jumped out and stood, looking at the peaks around us. The weather was perfect. There's a nice call up there. That's, yeah, that's the call that was our high point on this thing back okay. in 08. I'd say we put it like, like get some water, get some camp set up, and then yeah. go ski. It just feels rejuvenating to be out here. And I think that this, the stoke is high, so it's, it's time to get to work. And I think that we're all ready to really just get at it. Wit, Dave, and I had grown up together as climbers, but we had never tied in together for a big climb. Dave is a child of California sunshine, born to surf crashing waves of granite. Wit is a product of the Rockies, quick to smile and comfortable on nearly any mountain terrain, no matter the conditions. We looked at the walls only long enough to ensure conditions were right. So we kind of picked out a line. It was sort of a seamless, unanimous decision on which way we want to try. And so we're going to go for it. The Bridwell route goes up the right side, up what he calls the ship's prow. And, uh, and there's a big wall out to the left that that's, hasn't been tackled. And so the nature of the route really has sort of two parts to it where you have to go big wall climbing, and then when you're done big wall climbing, you then have to go alpine climbing. We had each been on many expeditions and specialized in different styles of climbing. We each loved the mountains, and for each of us, to love them was to engage with them. We started by fixing ropes on the bottom of the wall. The 
The type of climbing that we're engaged with takes a little bit of time. Um, it's not super, super fast. With these walls like this, that's really kind of like, that's what you need. Like you need time to climb these, these types of features. What'd you find with? Black crystal. Oh, that's amazing. Whit and I hung from the belay and watched as Dave took on the careful dance of ascending the first major blank section on the route. Two pitches higher, late in the afternoon, Dave finished his way up an overhanging golden arch that ended with a belay tucked in a corner below a tongue of ice. We fixed the remainder of our ropes before we repelled down. It provided us a pathway back to the ground and subsequently back to our high point in the morning. Our fourth day on the glacier, with all of our ropes fixed, we rested and prepared to launch. Essentially, we put two hard days in, uh, back to back. We've got ropes up there, we've got things kind of fixed, so now we're ready to go and push onto the upper kind of mixed section. Wait is up there. It's just led the mega pitch. Yeah, dude. Wit navigated into a short couloir. At its top, we were able to chop a ledge into the snow and ice. As the sun cast its light from the low point in its arc of the bright Alaskan night, all three of us fell sound asleep. Each of us had survived many years of climbing, but none of us had emerged unscathed. We climbed with the memories of partners lost and close brushes with our own demise. Each of us loved alpinism, but also carried it as a burden. The following morning, I took the lead on the terrain above. Upper mountain, there's the summit in the background. Graham, giving her on his block here, taking us to the ridge. At the ridge, we left behind much of our equipment, but kept the rope, not wanting to take any chances. Still, we were free to move with grace along the ridge. In a swirl of clouds, we made the final moves to the summit. We're up here, we're on top of Kachat and Spire. Oh yeah, we got this one forever. Yeah. We had leaned into many years of experience, and the descent went smoothly. We were down. We were safe. Yesterday, we, uh, we summited. We couldn't really ask for more than how this trip has been. Graham and Whit and I have just really, we've really had a good energy. We like got into Tuck you know, the weather's good. We flew out, we landed, we chose an objective immediately, and then we just got to it. And that's the biggest thing about being out here is you gotta love who you're with and trust them. And with these guys, it's been incredible. The following day, we were plucked off the glacier, headed back to civilization. Watching the terrain pass below us, I realized there would be a last time each of us would depart from those mountains. A goodbye after which we would never return in person. A point after which we would only visit in memories. But on this round, we had proven to ourselves that through experience, trust, and patience, we could maintain a wide margin. The mountains had carved each of us and made us into the humans that we were. This was what we wanted. This was what we needed.